My name is William Santo. Um, this um, video is about the uh, Goodjill project that I'm working with um, Miff and um, Alex from the University of Sydney. Um, this Goodjill language, it, you know, it's one of our one of the lost languages up in Charter Stowers. That's where. It, um, it's originally um, spoken, charter stowers and surrounding areas. Um, we have neighbours such as Google Barden and, and you, you're looking at um, Urundali. And I wasn't allowed to listen to elders talk back then. We weren't even allowed to stand behind them and while they were talking or we'll get a cloud across their ears that, uh, because um, we had to show respect and not listen to elders talk. Families had an understanding, the older family, we were roused upon and uh, so again and again not to talk language and uh, so it was never brought up and it was nothing that was ever felt proud to pass on as well. So, And particularly with the looming of the government, the Aboriginal Protection Act looming over our over, right over our shoulders and uh, so it was never something that we pursued. Back then in the early years um, when I was um, trying to organise our people and get them to understand the importance of um, coming together and language was so important because language was part of our our culture. We had to have language to identify who we are, where we belong and who we're connected to, because each within the Gujarbara nation, everyone um, come from a different area within that um, surrounding area of charter stairs. This diversity within the Gujarbara nation is reflected in the dialectal variation that we can hear among speakers. For example, listen to how the word I is pronounced by speakers Freddie Tumba, Ranji Pope, Harry Bunn and George Reid. Yeah, two eyes. Yelly. 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 An eye. I, Gilly. 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 They call him Dilly. 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 Yeah. Dilly. Harry Bunn is one of the um, good old elders and Google Barden so he can go both areas and um, I was listening to him speaking language to a, a, a durable man um, and uh, um, and I was wondering well you know I thought they were silly back then you know I was, you got to realize I was about eight or nine and uh, wondering what they were talking about what I go and look at for one minute yeah. <laughs> he remembers that. I was going to walk on the bed looking for a sea woman. Then I started to realise the importance of language and the importance of the um, reason why language and, you know, it connects us to our country and where we belong and things like that. The more I got into it, the more I was fascinated because that helped us with our... Um, our um, native title claim over Charter Stowers, um, the Gujula Cool Country claim. When I worked with Cassie in Townsville, she was a great lady. Um, I really um, enjoyed spending the time with her when we first published um, a dictionary on Gujula. That was the start back then. Because I, I, back then I was involved with the Girrigan um, Language Board. Um, and I've seen how important other groups were reviving their languages and having workshops. And we've done that through Gerrigan with uh, Trevor Stockley. Um, he would come up and um, 
you know, um, teach the language to us because we didn't know how to pronounce the language. Sound aspect is a big thing as well, and, and particularly there's a lot of people get very confident that they can master words and then have an understanding of the word. And when they do that, then they can confident and then they can sort of uh, keep, keep it moving and, uh, and uh, become very confident in, in talking language. You know, the audio of these old people talking is like me talking to another person. You know, it put chills up my spine, you know, because it's something that, um, you know, we, we thought we lost, but the voices are there and the voices are our, our proof that these old people spoke it and they say the language of, of Gujul the proper way. What do you call a crow? Watagan. 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 Mm. You don't want to sing it out. Don't you? <laughs> That's in a watagan. You think in a wak, wak, wak. Watagan, yeah. <laughs> Many of the challenges in the project come from the scarcity of sources. As a result, we only have one or two examples of a particular grammar point, so we're often left wondering about the productivity of certain morphemes. Because of this, we must rely on publications about other closely related languages to supplement our information on Gujal. There are also many benefits of working with these archival recordings, the most salient benefit being that speakers will often give us extra information about a word or phrase, this often reveals Gujal cultural associations linked to the word or information about speakers' experiences and personalities. That means you, you'll die. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> bad when a big rain's coming, you call it banner, of course. Banner, sorry. Big, big rain. Big rain, yeah. What? Kuru, wind. What is it? Kuru. Kuru. Wind. Yeah. Hey? Winter. 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 No, banner in my language. What is the Aboriginal man? I'm saying Yara, there. Yara. Yara. Yeah. Yara. Yara. Yeah, I say Yara gonna Yara. Yinuni. He gonna sit down and talk to us. But the white man gonna walk on past. I believe that uh, the new language, or when the language is sort of uh, brought about, that it's more in line with the modern generation. The, of communicating, and, uh, and I know in the old language things that the, the link words weren't used and things like that, but particularly so that you feel confident that it can carry on a conversation in language. It's not about me, it's about bringing our language back and reviving our language for the generations to come and let our people understand, especially my younger Gujarat people, that they got a language. It's been spoken in Tartist House. And um, a lot of that stuff was lost through massacres. And um, if we don't revive it, we're gonna lose, lose it forever. Alongside the physical copy of the Learner's Guide, our plan for this project is to produce a website which all Gujalbara people can access so they can learn their language at their own pace. We plan to include explanations of grammar points with examples taken directly from these archival recordings. We also plan to build upon the dictionary and to include sound bites so learners can hear how these words were traditionally pronounced. Many linguists now stress the importance of respectfully digitising linguistic resources if Indigenous languages are to have a stronger chance for revitalisation. The Gujal project builds upon the work of linguists and Gujalbara community members and hopes to be a solid foundation for even greater projects in the future. And um, remember, if you ever go to Charter Stowers, that's Gujal country. Whatever happened today, sacred
Sacred ground. 